Well, welcome to Texas Truck Channel. I'm Brian. I'm Craig. Stay this way. Stay this way. We can't show him. Craig. Craig. We bought something. We did. It's yep. a long, it's a long termer. We've added it to our fleet. We've spent our own money on this. Yep. There's a few things we needed to cover, Craig. Yes. One, first of all, as people always say, nice truck you're reviewing. That's too expensive. Where are the affordable trucks? We've got that. Yeah. Yep. What else do we have? Well, now you give it away. It's a truck. Well, obviously, it's Texas truck. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, fair yeah, yeah, enough. Yeah, come on. Yeah, so they also, you know what else they want, Brian? Huh? They want it to be dependable and reliable. There's too many gadgets on trucks. Simple. And I'm afraid it's going to break on, break on me on the trail. Like, right. I need like manual windows and maybe other manual things. That's a clue. That's a clue. What else do we have? Speaking of manuals, we actually have a manual. Manual transmission. That it's, takes it down to two trucks yes. available today with manual transmission and no power door locks yep. and no power remote entry because of that. But it does have push to start. I think it's time we tell. Wait, wait, wait. wait. One more clue. Okay. It's also a convertible. And it's not a Dakota. <laughs> not an old Dakota. Not. <laughs> it is a Gladiator. And that's right. Here is the key. There is no button on it. The only thing there is is that right there to open the manual door lock key on the door. That's how bare bones this thing is. Look, we bought this thing and plugged our boys right here, Mays and uh, Aurora, Missouri. That is not a paid plug. We just bought it from them. They were a great dealer to work with. Just giving honest feedback there. Um, look. This is the cheapest truck available with four-wheel drive on sale in the country. Actually, probably in the world that I'm aware of. Well, that's not right. That can't be right. In the country. We're going to stay with the country because I'm sure there's a small, cheapo car in China that's got that covered. <laughs> but not only that is it four-wheel drive. I mean, not all-wheel drive. So Maverick's out. That's all-wheel drive. I'm talking four-wheel drive, meaning a two-speed transfer case with a 50-50 split, not a clutch pack. That's what you get here. So if those guys are in the keyboards going, man, trucks are too expensive. Oh, I wish I had crank windows. We got you, dude. Also, we've got live axles. There's more on that. Let me grab the Monroney real quick. All right, boys and girls, here's the actual Monroney. This is not a photocopy from fleet management. This is the Monroney, the one that came with the car because, well, we bought it. It is a sport 4x4. They all come standard with 4x4. We have a total of two options, Craig. You know what they are? Silver. Silver and slush mats which are the rubber <laughs> floor mats and also a connected services delete credit of 165 dollars yes. which means it doesn't have the you don't need that satellite crap that's how bare bones it is if you lose it they won't find it for you that's where we're at right now um but something i want to point out that's really interesting that i did not anticipate going into this because if you look at jeep wranglers craig the standard sport or the sport s comes with a dana 30 in the front and a dana 35 in the back which is the smallest axle you can get on a jeep wrangler slash gladiator it used to be if you got the heavy tow package you would get dana 44s well now you get dana 44s as standard right here heavy duty dana 44 front and rear that's the same axle you get on the mojave as well as the rubicon so out of the box a gladiator gives you real diffs that are really buildable now the thing you don't get that you would get in a rubicon is locking differentials my argument to that is we paid thirty-one thousand dollars out the door for this thing that is at least 20 grand less than a rubicon um, i'm sorry for less than three grand you can put in your lockers you're done and air lockers are arguably better than electronic lockers. They don't have a problem. They get sunk underwater with sensor issues. They just are on or off. That's it. So anyways, if you're really serious about overlanding, off-roading, just doing truck stuff, which we'll talk about in a minute, this is your jam. I hate to say it. And now we got to cover one more thing before we get into any of the wheels and tires. Go, go right there, Craig. I want to show you something real quick. Right here. You see this? Yeah. Yeah. It, keep, it keeps it's a, going. It's a long yeah, way. Keep on coming. Yeah. So Wrangler stops here. This just keeps going after the door. So the yes. cab is really big. And then there's a bed that's bigger than all of its competition. And that's because Jeep had to have two dirt bikes in the back of this. Well, with the tailgate down, which there you go. That's a long truck, and everyone's like, oh, it looks goofy. Yep, right, Brian, right, exactly. Yeah. Brian, yeah. everybody hates this part right here, right, I think. Right. And, and this wheelbase is actually 137 inches, which is actually quite long. Do you know how long a full-size four-door short bed F-150 is? A little bit longer. 144. There you go. Barely. So it is shorter than a full-size truck. True. But proportionately, it looks kind of funny. I hear you. What I'm hearing just here to say is, you're right, it looks funky. What'll be interesting, Brian, is in another episode, we might do a hill test in this form. Yep. Will that be an obstacle or will that be an issue, that, that well, wheelbase? We're going to find out. And before we get into more looks, I want to just knock out. We've done one thing already to this. We added Rubicon yes. takeoff rock rails. These were freebies off of Marketplace. So if you have a stripped um, Gladiator, it looks really exposed. It kind of looks like it's, its belly is hanging out from its too short of a t-shirt situation. Like it's going to get, you know, rubbed or caught on something. These guys are actually integral. They're, how many bolts are in there, Craig? Uh, there's actually four... Uh, eight bolts eight bolts and they are all the way down their base out these are serious and they're heavy so look 
guys that take these off Rubicons, I understand if you want like a tree slider and that kind of stuff, I get it. Otherwise, this is a real deal. I would not uh, shy away from this. And if you have a, one without it, go in Marketplace and get one. They're free all day long. Yeah, they're out there all over the place. They're everywhere, or yeah. very cheap. And, the, uh, and these just are too easy to mount up. They are. All yeah. right, back to the tires up front. So look, we do have my favorite cheap wheel, which is <laughs> the basic Steely. And I do want to admit, um, the spare tire looks cooler than this does because it's just holes. Yeah. This has five spokes. These are fine, but these just scream, I bought the cheap one. I think they call this a design steely. I'll look, I'm with you. Just yeah. give me the, give me the, the actual tire. steely. Give me the so, actual steely. So props to TFL, when the Gladiator came out, you know what, two or three years ago, they went with Mopar and they bought five steelies. And they, well, there were four steelies, right? I had one, mm -hmm. and they threw it on there and it looked awesome. Yeah. So if we were to actually keep this for ourselves, we would probably get those. Right. And I found those for a hundred dollars on Marketplace, by the way, they do exist. <laughs> Wheel and tire, these are 245, 75, 17s. They're dueler HTs, they're Skinny. highly. They are pizza cutters, absolutely. But they are incredibly quiet. I have driven this thing from Missouri all the way down to Houston and all around Fort Worth. You've driven it a bunch too. Yeah, they actually, I'm kind of not looking forward to changing I know. this because this is a really quiet well, don't, tire. Don't tell them what we're doing, okay? <laughs> it's for later. We've got, we got mods coming up. But anyways, you know, it's a really quiet tire and actually its road manners are incredibly good. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that long wheelbase is it is stable as heck on the highway. I'm True. sorry, like the F350, with a live front axle is in the same ter territory as this in terms of stability. I'm, Makes it a little less sporty, but yeah. Fair, but okay. <laughs> but you it's win. cheap. <laughs> you win. All right, also another thing. On the S, you have a non-painted fender flare. Doesn't look as nice as the upper optional trimmed Rubicon. Eh. Fair, but when you're on the trail, this bolts off, and if you scratch it and rip it off, who cares? Get another one. Also, marketplace all day long. Also, it doesn't scratch. It really. doesn't scratch yeah. very much. Um, also, if you got a Rubicon takeoff fender, it actually comes up to this hood line, mm. gives you more wheel travel. So mm. look, J-E-E-P, just empty every pocket. That means how many <laughs> mods you're gonna be getting. Everything has a bolt because it can come off and something can go there. So just know that. Very functional, not a, not a lot of form. Not a lot of form, all function. I'm okay with that. Actually, I, I admire that, I really do. That's why the looks just, I'm over it. They don't bother me. This is the uh, anti-cyber truck. <laughs> you know what that means, Craig? That means, uh, that it means it's got a badge, so you can put more badges it here. It does have a badge, you can put more badges, but it also means that this, in its stock form, Jeep claims, will do the Rubicon Trail as it sits, not even with these dudes. Wait a minute, but this isn't a Rubicon. It's, I know, I know. The Rubicon doesn't mean it can do the Rubicon. That means it can do the Rubicon. Oh, interesting. I'm wondering how much damage would happen there. Coming on back, fuel door check. First of all, there's not a pop to release. I like that. Lastly, there is not a capless system. I don't like that. The good news is just, you don't have a painted yeah. fender, so the cap can just dangle here. That's true. And another, it's fine. Another advantage. Yeah, actually, there is a keeper right here. It just doesn't work. It's funny, though, how thin this bed is because it actually protrudes the actual... <laughs> does it? Oh, it does. Yeah. There's a hump right here. There's a hump there, there and not over there. Coming up back, we do have a bona fide plastic bumper, but a beefy tow hook on the left side. Only one. Only one. If you had a higher trim, you would have it on both sides of another cutout here. We also have a four and seven way pin trailer harness. For what trailer hitch? Uh, we don't have that. So oh. you look down oh. here, oh, okay. there's a big bar. You can buy an aftermarket hitch that will bolt here, but Mopar won't sell you that piece. They will sell you a whole new hitch, which actually has another tow hook on the side. So if we were to put the Mopar hitch on, we would have to cut this bumper out or swap it for a different one. Hey, Brian, hmm. Brian, is that a Ram truck under there? What is that? Yeah, it is, because that Dana 44 also lives under a Dodge Ram with coil suspension and multi-link in the rear. That's why it rides so darn good. I'm actually impressed with that. And that's because this is not just a Jeep with a bed. It's a Jeep truck. And people, oh, interesting. People, interesting, yeah, weird concept. Everyone goes, oh, it looks like a Jeep trying to be a truck. I go, yeah, duh, that's the whole point. That's what this is. Let's see what this thing sounds like. Okay, all right, look, I'm okay with that. That's awesome, and take your four-banger turbo and shove it, because this sounds better. All right, boys and girls, if you are tired of turbos, we've got you covered here. The old man craving for naturally aspirated power, although he's also asking for a V8, he's not gonna get that, but he will get naturally aspirated power, and we only have to go in the cab to open this thing. No turbos, no hybrid? No turbos? Well, not yet. That will come in the future, and look, there is a prop rubber right there, but it's a Jeep, dude. Why bother with yeah, that? You don't Just need flip that. it all the yeah. way back, rest Boom. it down, Boom, you're set. That. Now you can get access to anything. If something happens on the trail, you are good to go. Now, I do want to point out this is a dual bird cam Pentastar 3.6 liter V6, 285 horsepower, 360 measly little foot pounds of torque. Um, look, the internet wants to complain about the torque on this. I hear you. They do make a diesel, but then it's automatic and it's not particularly reliable. This is probably the best motor 
this chance has ever had. This is the most simple one available. Right, that's what we mean by it. If you're gonna go do trail stuff and be serious about it, this is the most simple. They are known for eating camshafts and lifters at around 60 to 80,000 miles. That is a potential thing and that is outside of warranty. So be honest with yourself, do your homework. That could happen. Um, but that could happen with any car anytime. Let's be very clear about that. In an hour, two weeks of owning this, we've had no problems that I can report yet. <laughs> In a thousand miles, zero issues. Two thousand miles, no problem. Um, but I do like this motor a lot. It has personality. Uh, I do, it's not perfect, but I do think it's today's Slant 6. You, you mentioned that previously, right? The, the Slant 6 that Chrysler had for years was just dead, not reliable, wouldn't rev, but just lasted forever and got good mileage. This gets good mileage too, which we'll talk about on the drive, but let's check out the interior next. Time to check out the interior of our long-term Gladiator. Brian, let's start back here. Um, these lights right here for the license plate are bright. If you're ever trying to get away from the police, <laughs> they're going to find you. They're going to find your tag. It's yeah. the easiest car in the world to see the tag. Also, and, and it blinds that at night a little yeah. bit for sure. But it also, when you hit reverse, these lights come on in conjunction with these. I don't know why anyone ever needs extra lights to back up no. those things. So I, at night, I can see you can almost light up a camp really side. far. Yeah, really well with that. Maybe that's on purpose. Okay, let's check the see if it's damping. Look yes, at it that is. stripped truck. $31,000 dampened tailgate. There are expensive trucks that don't have that. I just want to point that mm -hmm. out. Also, it's a five foot bed, a full five foot, not four and a half. But you do this number and Brian, I can put a four by eight sheet. Up. I'm glad you remember that. Four by eight foot. Four right. eight sheet of plywood. Yeah, right, that's right, it. Right, yeah, right. yeah, and it'll it'll rest on top of the fender liners, and then uh, yes. Yeah, so that's that's very interesting. I like that a lot. This is actually a usable um, picket bed. One of the things I want to point out is my maybe my favorite thing, maybe a little controversial. This is not a lot. This is pretty shallow. I liked it though because Brian. I'm five foot nine. I'm not the tallest guy in the world, and I can just do this. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were shallow. <laughs> well, sometimes that too. <laughs> Brian, LED lights that actually come on. Um, that are you can toggle on and off inside. Yep. This is this comes basic. This is yeah, standard. That's this comes, standard. This comes standard. with everything. Absolutely. I'm gonna get in here real quick. I'm gonna show you all. You also get tie downs. You get a nice tie down here. It's one on both sides, and you also get a nice uh, ring up here that um, for tie down as well. That has yep. come in handy already. I've used this and those already. Moving some several things. times. You too. have too. Brian, we've already tested it. We got a picture. We'll throw it up here. Mm -hmm. That's where. The motorcycle goes. Yeah, my issue was the motorcycles I had didn't match this tread pattern. What? Yeah, I know. Couldn't okay. use it. Did, did it go in that spot? Yeah, we're in that spot. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, moving on the inside, Brian. Let's we'll start with the door. Look at that baby over there. That is, see that handle? Yeah, it's a hand. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, There's no, another there's, handle. Oh, That's one. actually yeah. for the window, yes. And look, it goes all the way down. Yeah, How many rear windows go all the way down? <laughs> Hey, by the way, my kids have never seen this before. Uh, you've got your strap here for the door. Um, you can also make a, you can an aftermarket paracord strap. I mean, super. I mean, I mean sure. you're set there. Before I get in, though, Brian, I want to point out something really interesting. Look at this. No, no, just, just do my side oh, first. Oh, excuse me. It split folds up. Yep. It's a 60-40. Most of these mid-sized trucks, the whole thing comes up. Go ahead and lift yours up now. Look at all the storage. What has happened here, Brian, is because this wheel back here is farther back and the wheelbase right. is 137 inches. We have room. We have room and we have a lot of storage. So in all seriousness, if you're overlanding or you got kids and you got a bunch of junk, you can either take these seats out and have all kinds of room or you can just use this with the kids. Wayne, why are you there? Look down there, what's this guy? That well, we, we got a tool, little toolbox to remove our doors. Off. That's what I assume that's what this is. No, that's that's where you keep all the hardware from taking the doors. Oh, and oh, off. oh! And it, it even tells you where to put your bolts. Exactly. That's pretty cool. I like that a we lot. We do so. have a toolkit behind the seat as well. And then Brian, let's check out behind the seats. We get more storage back here. It actually actually folds down. Folds flat, by the folds way. Folds flat. Ranger made a big deal about in the new Ranger how their things fold flat. They made that such a big deal. Uh, Jeep's been, been doing, doing this for a while. Yeah. But yeah, you get plenty of storage back here. You got little cubby holes, you got a little net. That is pretty cool. That's um, a toolkit right there. Very good. Yeah. All right. Let's see what kind of room we have, Brian, because that's important. I'm sitting behind you. You're okay. six foot four. You drove this last. Yep. And um, look at this. Oh. I actually have some room. I have pockets on both sides. Why aren't pockets. your knees touching, though? They're not touching at all. I actually have a lot of room in here. I've not sat back here yet. This is the first time back okay. here. Okay. Let me see this thing. And Brian, this thing, again, remind you, how much was this? $31,000 out the door. It is stripped. I have rear AC vents. You know how many mid-sized trucks have rear, C, rear AC vents? Uh, this and GM, I think, does as well. But do they? They do, but Ranger does not do it. Nope. Toyota does not do nope. it. Nope. And that is a 
hard problem in Texas summers. Yes. Yeah. So we also get more storage in here for um, drinks. We don't have any in the doors, although you get those nets, which actually work quite well. This will for... actually hold two water bottles. Yeah, actually, the other actually, day. Before yeah. they wear out and don't hold yeah, it. They're, they're <laughs> yeah. And Brian, uh, before we get to the actual convertible part, one of the things I want to point out, because this is not a hard top, there is seemingly, we're going to find out in a second, Lots of headroom here, Brian. Right, so I want right. you to get in and see what happens when you now, sit in the back of this. I'm sitting behind this seat all the way back because I was vacuuming it earlier. It's not behind. No one sits this way. Um, so I could get knee room in here. Sure. Also, would you're not you even, look you're at not not remotely not even close. touch? You can wear a cowboy hat in this. Oh my! And the headrest is the right spot. My gosh! I have not sat in a mid-size truck that can do this, and very few full-sizers actually have anything like this at all. We well, just want to start right here with the simplicity of this truck. <laughs> Because it's just all throughout say. the thing. Look, the headlights, there's no there, there's no auto. I know. There's no auto. I know. I want the headlights on, guess what I do? You I put them on. on. I want just the parking lights on, I just put the parking lights on. It's that simple. You yeah. don't have to think about it, what setting, what mode, any of that crap. You just turn it on or off. No nonsense. Oh, I want to dim the uh, instrument cluster. I just do that. Oh, I want the actual interior light on. I just push it all the way up and it's all the way on. I mean, it's just dead simple. Yeah. And that's just the beauty of this thing. It is refreshing. And I love that. So let's get on in here. Let's check this bad boy out. Um, and yes, it's maybe not the roomiest cockpit. I'm just going to be honest. And when I have to drive this manual to reach the clutch pedal, I have to move up on 5'9". I'm a little close to the dash, but what happens is I get used to it really quick. And it's yeah. actually... It's kind of charming. Kind of, the ergonomics aren't terrible. No. One of the things I do want to show, though, let's... let's I want to at least put it in accessory mode. Um, oh, well, let's show you these gauges first. Look at these gauges. You get a sweep, a gauge sweep when you start it up. Brian, they're manual gauges yeah, no digital no bull crap no digital bull crap you still get a cluster here that you can actually toggle things and look at stuff and that sort of stuff um and it's actually useful information like i need to know coolant temp i need to know oil temp how many vehicles do you not get that and it's yeah. hard to find look at these vents these vents are 360 and you can put them in any position you want you can close them you can turn them off you can completely spin it around when you close it it just keeps spinning you get storage up here and by the oh. way everything up here brian you can put an accessory somewhere. You wait, pull wait, this hold, up. Hold on, that's what this is for. Oh, oh, oh there you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. get, get the duck out of here. <laughs> so you can, uh, but you put, pull that little screw out there, you can put a little mount out there, and boom, yeah. now you got a, a phone holder or a tablet holder or whatever, whatever it is. Whatever you want, yeah. And then moving on down here to the Uconnect, um, it's pretty simple and straightforward. This is this comes basic. That's, yeah, it's a this small. Is a seven inch Uconnect, the, the simple one, yeah. It is a small screen, but Brian, you get a volume and a tuning knob mm -hmm. you just don't have to think about it it's just very intuitive it works well you can switch to different media climate control works well this doesn't have auto climate control so you actually just have a just warmer or hotter yeah, there's, no, really, there's no there's number. no temperature yeah, it's, just it's just warmer red or blue hotter <laughs> that's it. you know it's just or cool, cooler or warmer that's that's it but it works well i do like how you get a jeep actually recirculating icon or a gladiator, gladiator icon yeah. it's interesting because down here the hard key it's a Wrangler. It's a Wrangler. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. you got the Jeep family represented in here, um, but it works well. And Brian, you even get CarPlay. You have to plug it in with a wire. Let's, so let's go to, the, we get CarPlay, see what that looks like. Oh, well, that, well, well oh, that's really small. Well, <laughs> that's really small. Uh, hey, that is, well. So it's already a small screen to begin with, and then it gets even smaller in CarPlay. It's, it's funny. A, a, a you very connect, tiny screen. You get seven inch, and in CarPlay, you get like 4.3 inch, <laughs> yeah. whatever that is. I'll say, that, look, Brian, it's, I'm going to put your phone next to it just for comparison <laughs> in all seriousness. It's barely, in fact, it might be smaller than your phone. The so actual, what you do is you get one of those cool mounts up here, yeah. and then you just mount the phone like this. Yes. And yeah. leave the Uconnect strip there. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, Brian, uh, most importantly, this right yes. here, you got a third Third pedal, that is what we want. That's the only thing we care about. One of the best things about this thing is that it's a uh, soft top. And how many trucks can do this? A little swip, flip right here. We push it back. Bob's your uncle. Now we're topless. The Miata of trucks. How do you like that? Let's go drive. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Brian, uh, we're in the Jeep Gladiator Sport. Our long-termer, TTC long-termer. Yep, we own this one. Zero to 60 time, hit it. These are our tires. <laughs> Oh, second gear scratch. Out of, falls off cam, cam's back, here we go. Third gear scratch. Okay, all right, yes. what you got, what you got? Um, zero to 60 and 8.75? Well, hold on, what were you expecting? <laughs> I was not <laughs> expecting under nine with me in it. Okay, I really okay, was not. all right. Um, what did you get without me in it? I'm really con really curious. But first of all, there's a lot to talk about here, but it was 7.81 to 60. Not bad. The best car and driver got out of this thing was 7.5. Wow. 
on a prep surface, right. the whole thing, right. with probably better GPS. And maybe 410 gears instead of 370. Well, yeah, yeah. they absolutely may have had that. Yeah. A lot of people have been trashing this manual. Yep. It's an Aishin unit or an Aizen unit, whatever yeah. you want to call it. G continue. Okay, yeah, people trash this and they go, oh, this is a bad manual, it's a bad manual, it's a bad manual. And look, this week we're driving a bunch of manuals. We have mm -hmm. six manuals in our disposal this week, mm -hmm. just one of those weeks. Um, this is not the best of them. Nope. I'll be honest. And the, what I mean by that is the transmission is fine. Mm -hmm. The gearing is not perfect. <laughs> no. But the clutch is the real problem. Yeah. And it, the issue is the relationship between that shifter and this clutch pedal. There's some kind of disconnect <laughs> and it's never organic. And I hate to say it, this thing needs a rev match. Ooh. It would solve it. It needs mm. rev match for up and down like the new Tacoma is going to have. Okay. Because you get rev hang and you also get random rev, rev drop. And so when you're trying to like float gears, you go, I didn't change my inputs, and it just, <laughs> I don't know why, and that's that's the issue. Yeah, and what happens is when you're on a back road and you're actually trying to hustle it. Right, which is not what it's made for, to be It's not what it's made for, but hey, it's a sport. We're going to do it anyways. Uh, it does, it's, it's just like, basically tells you, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? What are you do yeah. You're in a Jeep. Yeah, like, and, and this is, the, here, let's get back to gearing. <laughs> first gear, actually it's fine off the line, no yeah, there. Yeah, no the problem one, two, first. Bam, bam, bam. This is not front wheel drive, you're not grinding gears, it yep. does it. Yep. 59 miles an hour is red line in second gear. <laughs> so you're doing zero to 60 testing. It's hard to do. You have to hit third and you're losing time. So I feel like if you But can, I appreciate the extra shift, need for an extra shift. Sure, but if it was zero to, fi to 59, yeah, you'd be it'd be like a seven one. So anyways, that said, this manual, yes, it's not the best in the world. A lot of people have been dogging it. Right. But I'll say this, for Jeep thingies, like trailing and just driving around town, yeah. it's fine. Well, and look, just putting I, around, I'm really having fun with that. Yes, exactly. I've had I so agree. And look, the, the ZF8 speed is the quintessential automatic, and mm -hmm. this comes with that, and we've driven that. It's excellent. It's, it's great. very, very good. I wouldn't fault anyone for getting it. I'm still going to pick this if I have the choice. Just because, yes, I agree with you. Because what happens is even a bad man, what happens after two days, you, you, figure, you figure it out. You figure all those right. things out. And you kind of like it. And, and you just it, have fun. It's just more fun. It's more fun to yep. drive slowly with a manual than it is cranking numbers with an automatic. And that's yeah. all this is about. It. Jeeps should have manuals. So right. thank you, Jeep, for keeping that. Let's talk ride and drive. I want you to start with that. Live axles front and rear, coil suspension front and rear, close to your heart. Yes, I'm going to talk to you about what old Jeeps do. Old Jeeps do this all day long and you just you're constantly correcting it that's trying to get that's going straight brian that's yeah, yeah, driving yeah. straight yeah this one doesn't do that this one does not do that it's actually quite good and actually i think we've got maybe the the secret spec yeah with these tires the highway <laughs> tires the longest wheelbase possible it's really helping things and there's no lift here or any of that business yeah. so no it depth actually, level it actually drives really smooth and the suspension coil suspension on a live axle 80 series <clears throat> Our work out really well. What happens is, and especially with the long wheelbase, it just rides really good. So good, in fact, Brian, we have a lot of cars. Yep. Our wives get to ride in them, uh, yeah, too. I was say the same thing. And my <laughs> wife, we had a CRV. I'm not trying to dog a CRV, but a brand new CRV did not ride as good as this. this. Yeah. I had the same feedback. We drove this to Houston with my family of four. I want to talk about truck capability now because everyone's like, oh, it's just a Jeep that wants to be a truck. No, this is a truck. And my the reason why I love this thing so much, which we didn't think we were going to like it that much, mm. we are in love with this thing so yes, far. Yes, we are. Uh, one, because manual, and two, because midsizes are awesome. They're easy they to live with. They're right easy to size. Park, and this is a really real midsize. Yes. So I took this to Houston, family of four for Thanksgiving, came back with the maximum amount of payload this could take both inside and out in terms of volume. And I can tell you right now, if I was in a Ranger or a Tacoma or a Colorado or a Canyon, I couldn't bring everything home. I would have to leave a child behind. It wouldn't have worked out. <laughs> this did it. Yeah. Okay, Brian, look, here's what this thing is. This is the, Toyota quit doing it. They had a Land Cruiser 80 series. Right. They quit making it. Everybody's yep. like, oh, what happened? If this, we've got it here. If they made this thing overseas, we'd all be freaking out and drooling over it. We've got it. It's here. Well, yeah. If Australia got this and we didn't, we'd be yes. so pissed. Why can't we get the Jeep Gladiator? You That'd can get diesel. Thing. You can get manual. You, you can do all the things with this. V6 and all this kind of yes. stuff. By the way, four adults can go on a hunting and camping trip with this because adults fit in the back and the front. It's a convertible or a hard top. And because it's a Jeep, there's a bolt-on for anything you want to do. Tents, racks, house of jacks that nobody needs. All kinds of things like that you want to do. Look, done. Everybody's mad that Jeep makes a Land Cruiser 70 Series in Australia, but not the U.S. You don't need it here. The reason they don't do it you. here is because this is here. Yeah, exactly. And I'm annoyed that people aren't buying these things. That's why we got it for $10,000 off. I'm not annoyed. Thank you for not buying them. Thanks for buying them. <laughs> Hopefully you don't watch too many of these videos. By the way, we might buy another one. <laughs> See you later. Thanks for watching.